Hello everyone, I'm Leanne of Alhambra Tribal Dance. I am a Fat Chance Belly Dance sister studio. My troupe and I dance and I teach in the San Francisco Bay Area of California. Since 2010, Alhambra Tribal Dance has been incorporating baskets into American Tribal Style Dance and we've gotten a lot of questions about it. So, the purpose of this video is to provide you with some foundational information about our dialect, about the way that we handle the basket, and if you are interested and would like us to come and give a workshop, please let us know. Otherwise, a lot of you are already watching a lot of our videos and picking up a lot of things. So we're hoping that this video will help clarify a lot of the things that you're seeing in the video and help to improve what you're doing with our dialect. So. Thank you for watching. In this video, we're going to talk about, first of all, how to hold the basket, principles behind why we created the dialect and how we created it, uh, head wrap and zill advice, and finally, positions and rules about the dialect. Now, only dancers who are completely familiar with the entire ATS vocabulary really should be attempting this dialect. Don't attempt to incorporate props into ATS until you are solid in the entire vocabulary of the dance. All right, so let's get started with, first of all, how to hold the basket. We have seen so many beautiful dialects out there that hold the basket as it is, a vessel, and it's wonderful, it's absolutely beautiful. We've even seen one dialect that holds it on the palm, which we think is incredibly dramatic and requires a lot of skill, we made the choice to hold the basket vertically in our dialect. And in order to do that, we've got to employ the thumbs at the back of the basket. Notice that I'm not gripping the basket here. I'm really just kind of pinching it with my hands. I'm resting my fingers on the front, but I'm using my thumbs to push the basket forward so that I get that full moon position. This is a really important part because if you've got four dancers on stage and one's got her basket like this, and another's got it like this, and another's got it like this, and another's got it like this, you're going to have an uneven look. And so it's very important to have all of your dancers on stage looking in the mirror and making sure that the angles and the verticality of your basket are even. So using those thumbs at the back will really, really help you. Um, so why did we end up incorporating the verticality uh, here instead of holding it as a vessel? Years and years and years ago, when I became fascinated with balancing things on my head while dancing, I could understand the, the sword and what the sword meant. There's a lot of stories and lore swirling why dancers dance with swords on their heads, but there wasn't really a story behind baskets, and I was confused about it. I didn't really know what the basket really meant. So I went to Carolina and I said, Carolina, what is the basket? What does it mean? And Carolina, in her wisdom, being a visual artist before she was a dancer, said, the basket's a shape. And it's that bit of advice that has completely informed the way that we created and developed this dialect. And that shape is an important thing. This is a round shape. The round shape is the earliest shape that we recognize. It's the shape of our mother's eyes. So as soon as you insert a round shape in front of an audience, your audience knows more about that shape than you will ever be able to teach them during your dance. And you've got to recognize that. You've got to recognize that your audience expects a certain completeness to this circular shape. And they're going to be watching that circular shape wherever it goes on stage. So keep that in mind as you are dancing with this, this dialect and using the basket in the vertical shape. Okay, very, very important. Once we started dancing with the shape vertically, we started seeing all kinds of things. Um, we saw uh, the, the image of the goddess Hathor, or maybe it's an Ankh, we're not quite sure. We saw the sun setting and the sun rising again. We saw a music note. We saw so many wonderful things. We saw a shaman 
drummer with her drum on her hip. So that's an example of these iconic images that your audience will associate as well. So keep that in mind as you are doing uh, this dialect, that this shape really resonates with your audience in a, in, in a very deep way. So let's talk a little bit about the principles of the dialect and what uh, informed our dialect. First of all, we do not incorporate the basket into every single step of ATS. We made that as a conscious decision, and that's because there are three guiding principles that we used in order to develop this dialect. And the very first one was, does the basket help to preserve the integrity of the movement? We did not want to incorporate a prop into an already complete and beautiful dance only to have the prop take away from that movement. So preserving the integrity of the movement is of, of paramount importance. Here's an example. So for example, I can certainly go into corkscrew turn. And when I go into my turn, I can turn so carefully that my basket does not fall off, certainly. But does that, improve, does that preserve the integrity of the move? Because the actual move has tension and release. And it's kind of hard to maintain that with a basket on your head. And so that's why in our dialect, when we go into any full turn, that is an opportunity to remove the basket. And so that's an example of how preserving the integrity of the move was really, really important to us. The second guiding principle that we used was, can we completely improvise with this dialect? That was really key because as much as you talk about things with your partners before you go on stage, anything can happen before you get there. So we wanted to make sure that whatever happens, that we could still improv and follow each other in this dance. And finally, our third guiding principle is, is it beautiful? Is it attractive? Is it interesting? Is it engaging for the audience? Is it something that we would like to see? Here's an example of what we mean by that. So we started with Egyptian and Bast with the basket overhead, and we realized that we just didn't like the hand waving, the basket waving in the air. We didn't care for it. We didn't think it was attractive. Maybe you can make it look nicer, but we struggled with it and we didn't care for it. So we ditched it. One of the rules in our dialect, we don't use Egyptian. What we do use is Seviana. <laughs> And that works fine for us, but basic Egyptian, we do not use in this dialect. So that's an example of how we didn't incorporate every single step. Okay, so that's enough about our guiding principles. Let's talk a little bit about um, uh, baskets and head wraps. And a lot of people ask, you know, what, what kind of head wrap do you use? We are believers of less is more. And the reason for that is that these baskets are very lightweight. You can hardly feel them on your head. So the less head wrap you have, the better, because if you can't feel your basket, you can't feel it when it leaves your head. So make sure that you can always feel your basket. And I don't mean just the texture, feel the weight of the basket. If you have too much head wrap, you're not gonna be able to do that. All you really need is enough fabric for traction. I don't recommend conditioning your, your hair before you dance. Uh, but you just need a little bit of traction to be able to hold the basket on. I don't recommend doing a lot of build up here. I recommend doing more build up here if you need it so that your basket doesn't tip upward. And of course, you don't want it to tip downward. You want to spend a lot of time in front of a mirror playing with your basket and figuring out what works for you. And then after you're done with that, you need to get away from the mirror, be able to put that basket on and start dancing without uh, feeling crisis. So uh, that's about head wraps. Now uh, these baskets here that we use are uh, approximately 10 to, no, excuse me, 12 to 14 inches in diameter, about two to three inches deep, and they're of a very firm weave. We find that these baskets are ideal for our dialect. They uh, work well for just about any size of dancer and for all of the movements that we have in the air. 
That's not to say that a heavier basket cannot work. I have danced with this basket many times, which you can see is much larger, much deeper, much heavier. And the only thing is, it is more challenging in movements like this. So it takes a lot of practice and control. Likewise, a basket like this is firm and is of a good weight, except that it's so large that a smaller dancer with shorter arms would really struggle with a basket of this size. Now, when we speak about weave, you can see how this basket has a very floppy, loose weave. This is an example of a weave that will not work well for our dialect. You don't want this much flexion in your basket. Also, this is far too large and too heavy. This was our first basket that we started dancing with, and the only thing that we do with these baskets today is we put on that big, beautiful, heavy turban, we plop this baby on, and we just start grooving. Uh, we don't do any hand movements with this basket. We only use it uh, for the basket balanced on the head. So that's talking about different types of baskets and head wraps. A lot of people ask about finger symbols. Do we dance with baskets while wearing finger symbols? And the answer is yes and no. We don't always use the finger symbols. Uh, we tend to like to eliminate any potential of catastrophe on stage. So one thing that we developed uh, when we found that our basket piece was going to be in the middle of our set and not at the end of our set, was we found an opportunity to circle each other with arms overhead and simply flip our zills around to the back side of the finger. In that case, when we were ready to bring our basket, the finger symbol did not get in the way. After we were done dancing, we could remove the basket and then once again, in a very dramatic arms overhead gesture, flip the sills back and then be ready to go into the rest of our set. We have also pre-placed our finger symbols on stage. We have taken them off and putting them back on. We've done little subterfuges to uh, distract the audience while we retrieve our sills. Your mileage may vary. The point is, be very intentional about where your basket piece resides in your set. Figure out how you're going to get there. Figure out how you're going to exit. And that's a really important element. Okay. So finally, let's go over some basic positions of uh, our dialect. And uh, our very first position, there are three main positions. The first position is what we call basket shouldered. We use the left shoulder. We grip the basket from the outside. Make sure that the basket isn't tipped forward or back, up or down. And uh, we may enter with the right hand at the right hip. And when we see our partners, we'll do a dramatic arm and perhaps a turn. We may cross wrists and circle around each other. We may do an old school camel step, which a long time ago the camel step used to finish in a body wave, and so we pull out the old school finishing in the body wave. That's really about all we do with basket uh, shouldered. Uh, the other two positions, of course, are basket in hand or basket balanced. For basket in hand, there are more steps in slow than there are in fast. For basket balance, there are more steps in fast than there are in slow. Again, we did not incorporate every single ATS step into our dialect. And uh, a couple principles that help inform our dialect. First of all, any half turns that you may encounter suddenly become quarter turns. And the reason for that is just to lower the blood pressure of everybody involved. Um, if you can manage a half turn and fast while balancing a basket, <laughs> Good on you, show me video, I wanna see it. That's great, that's fabulous. We, we like to be easy on ourselves. We recognize that a lot can happen when you're nervous on stage and we wanna minimize accidents. So half turns become quarter turns. And finally, any full turn is an opportunity to remove the basket. So for example, we may have triangle step. That's a great way to remove your basket. 
Also, one of our favorites is the Arabic hip twist with the flourish. Great way to remove your basket, especially at the end of your song. All right, so with that, I will leave it to you to continue to explore our videos online. If you have questions about how we do a certain song or a, a, a certain step, uh, let us know. If it's really something that needs explanation, maybe we'll do another video. Otherwise, I see a lot of people using our, our videos anyway to learn the dialect. Thank you so much for your interest in our dialect. And the only thing we, we ask is that while you are incorporating our dialect, just recognize that it is our creation. So if you can credit us, that's really helpful. Um, we absolutely want to see you dancing this dialect. We want to see people incorporating it. It warms our heart so much to already be seeing it. So please, please, please append videos of yourselves dancing this dialect to this video. We would absolutely love to see it. Thank you so much. Namaste. And uh, we, we look forward to seeing your videos.